Our guest in this segment is Valerie Ledford. Valerie has run for Board of Education twice and is a special needs mom and assistant uh, in the classrooms in Jefferson County and owner of a bag of Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> well, now you are the owner. There I am. Now I am the owner of the Sour Patch Kids bag. So thank you. Uh, there are all sorts of fun flavors in here. I'll be distributing these out to the sports crew today, too, as they come in. I like to share. Okay. Right? Get Sharing them sugared scared. up. Get them all sugared <laughs> up, ready for, their, ready for their noon show. These are two flavors in one, by the way, Shower Patch Kids heads. One of them looks like SpongeBob. Uh, so anyway, uh, school year finished? School year is finished, thank goodness. Yeah, and uh, how are you surviving in the classroom these days? Um, I'm surviving. I think that's a good word, surviving. Yeah. Um, this year was exceptionally hard. Um, didn't know if I was going to make it through. What happened? Um, it's just our children need support. They need a lot of support. And um, being in a special education room, they get support, but that doesn't mean that they still don't need more support. Mm -hmm. And um, getting getting other people to understand the types of support and listening when you're just an aid is hard. It's hard to work through all the bureaucracy and get someone to listen and do something about it before it gets to the point where you can't do anything about it. There's been a turnover at the top in Jefferson County Schools. There's a new superintendent. Do you have any reason to believe things might improve in um, regards I, to what you're talking about? I hope so. Um, I heard him on the show last week and I liked his answers because he really doesn't know. So he's not going to bulldoze in the door and tell us what our problems are. He's going to listen. And I, I think listening to the bottom to where I am is an important place to start. What grades do you work with, Val? Um, I'm with the older elementary children, so um, fourth and fifth. A couple of the football coaches uh, where I coach at Oakdale High School in Frederick County are also special needs uh, classroom teachers. Mm -hmm. And they talk to me in, uh, about what they deal with on a daily basis. And, and these are special people. Mm -hmm. um, because the average person wouldn't put up with this much abuse exactly. every single day of their lives when they go to work. Well, and I want you to focus in on the word you used, mm -hmm. abuse. Because if you look at the definition, that's what it is. And we know that these kids have special needs and that they do and say things that aren't normal sometimes. But in the end, the definition is it's still abuse. So what's the level of protection for the teacher? There's obviously been a famous case in Berkeley County or two in regards to the protection for the students, and that's needed and richly deserved. I'm sure uh, you wouldn't consider throwing kids around the classroom as a way of disciplining them. Not that they did that. I'm not no. saying Mike doesn't need any more lawsuits out there. Right. Uh, but uh, there, there needs to be a level of protection for the, the aide and the teacher as well. Absolutely. Um, there is the Safe Schools Act, which most people aren't even aware of. I wasn't until this school year. And it outlines the protections for staff, but it's not utilized, at least not in the ways that I believe. Who's in charge of utilizing it? I'm, I'm assuming that the principal, the district, would have to utilize it. Um, I'm not sure though, because you know, everything's kind of written in a interpretation wise. So I guess it just depends on who you talk to. Well, lawyers have to approve all legislation that's written. We happen to have an attorney in the room here. So <laughs> let's go to, let's go to Matt Harvey, Mr. Harvey. Good morning, Miss Ledford. Um, if you had a magic wand, what would you do to, to make the necessary changes that you see are fit? Oh, well, I don't have a magic wand, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> but um, I, I think the, the biggest one is being able to have open and honest communication with, with everybody involved, um, starting with the people that work with each other in the classroom. If, if you don't have a team that works together, the whole thing's going to fall apart. The kids are going to see right through it, and they're going to pin you against each other because that's just human nature. Um, 
that's not a legislative fix. That's a uh, that's, that's a cultural issue within the school. It correct? is a cultural issue, but I think that's a lot of our problems. Is it's not something that the legislature need actually needs to fix. Okay. Because when we get legislature, it comes down filtered through all of these different places, which are all taking their interpretation upon it which gets filtered down and and that's the problem the interpretation of everything is so watered down it's basically well this says this but um you just need to stay quiet so you you might want to make a change in a classroom but you can't because the law that's written doesn't allow you to do so there's too much too many laws too much bureaucracy too Uh, much top down i i think it comes down to there there's just not enough willingness to see what the issues are and actually do something about them because it's easier to have a classroom that's set off that you know that there's going to be behaviors in. So we don't need to hear about those behaviors because we already know that that's going on. Whereas we actually need to talk about them because our jobs is to help fix and teach better coping skills on top of teaching academics. and. If you can't get to a point where you're calm or the classroom's calm, nobody's going to learn. And it shouldn't matter if you're in a special needs classroom. That sh- it shouldn't be allowed just because it's a special needs classroom. What can parents do to, to make the situation better? Um, I think parents have a lot more power than they realize. Um, I know as a, a parent, I have reached out usually meet the teacher night and I uh, meet the teacher but I also meet the administrators because um, you have to work as a team everybody has to be on the same page and you're gonna have some really uncomfortable conversations Um, I know I did this year with my child Um, God love her she's in a special ed classroom she's in she'll be in seventh grade Um, And her mouth got her in a lot of trouble this year. Um, Better her mouth than her fist, but um, neither one is good. And um, I spent a lot of time in the office and I had to ask to have a resource officer come talk to my child because what she said was absolutely inappropriate and necessary for that. And um, I sat in that office fearful that, that I was gonna be judged for being an awful parent, for doing what, what is right. But at the same time, those administrators looked at me and said, thank you, we need more parents like you. So I really think we need to build into where we can have those different difficult conversations we're human we all make mistakes but if we pretend that we don't have any mistakes like we've been doing for years then we end up with this mess that we've got now which covid helped create but it was there before covid ever got here bill kearns i am i have a good friend that's a special needs educator and uh he has many times told me that he was a student would put him up against a wall and um, or um, he'd have to get in the middle of two arguing arguing and fist fighting and so it takes a special person to be that 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 educator but I can I can tell Valerie you're very passionate about what you go through with at home or as in your job where do you feel the biggest I know you you talked about communication (laughs) Where, where do you feel the biggest disconnect is from where you're at for, to the top area? Where is that disconnect? Oh, where is that disconnect? I feel like the disconnect is in administration. administration. Um, I feel that each, <clears throat> and if this makes sense, I, I feel like each school is able to be its own. Like the principal's allowed to kind of pick and choose what they want to focus on and things like that, which is not a bad thing. However, we come to so many schools that do things differently 
and then you have parents at certain schools who are angry and other parents at other schools that are supportive and um so you have you have a fight between schools and parents almost but each school ends up being like a mcdonald's you know it's it's a franchise and we all have to serve the same thing the same ingredients but we can kind of pick and choose what we want to specialize in um and not everybody's getting their french fries so I, I really think that's that's the issue is when you have an administration where your staff can't come to you and have conversations most of the time you also have that environment where parents can't either mm. Did, they recently when i say recently i mean within the last couple of years required that cameras be put in classrooms yes in the special education the classrooms special, have Number one is has that been done? Oh, absolutely. And have you noticed a difference? Um, I I notice a difference in the fact that staff are extremely scared um, to do anything. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of like well, is I, that is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's it it's twofold. You know, yes, you you shouldn't be doing things that you shouldn't be doing, but they're afraid to do anything. Um, and you're a lot of times you're in a position where you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. If you step between a child, you can get in trouble for stepping between that child. But if they hit each other, you could get in trouble for letting them hit each other. Why would you get in trouble for stepping between them? And and if it's you're not supposed and to if it's on, if it's on video, then that cor would corroborate the account of the teacher or the aide. However, if an issue arises whoever views that can then say it happened this way because that's the way i saw it even though you were there and you know what happened is this problem fixable at the principal's office level the, the board of education level the superintendent level uh, I, I think there <clears throat> there needs to be a way to where when the upper people are evaluated that there's a way for the community to be a part of that um, and, and the staff be a part of that. For the upper people, you mean like a superintendent, um, deputy superintendents, principals? Who I'm talking, talking about? about principals, um, central staff, um, different things like that. I, I know with my issues that I went through this year, which I'm not going to get into deeply, um, I, I, I went above. And, and I, I asked for support from so many different people. And um, the answer was, well, you can apply for a new position. I'm like, that doesn't fix the problem. Mm -hmm. Does that make me safe? Yes. Does that change it for anybody else or the students who need the support? No. Do we churn through special aid teachers and aides faster than the uh, uh, teacher population in general? Yes, yes. Is, is anybody looking for a solution to that, or is it just accepted as job burnout because that's what this position is? I think it's accepted as you knew what you signed up for when you took the job, so if you can't handle it, find a different one. So is anybody actively working right now for a solution to this issue, either in the entire state, the the, count, the Jefferson County area, anything that you're aware of? There are um, things that have been set up in discussion groups to find out what the issues are, um, which is a process. Um, I don't know how they're going or what exactly they're doing and different things like that. But when it comes down to it, we, we don't, it's not like we have somebody in the central office saying that this is a common occurrence. What can we do to fix it? it it's crickets. You you have two different viewpoints on this because you're a special needs mom. Yes. And you you adopted. Yes. So you 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 signed up for this twice. Yeah. <laughs> right. Both yeah. at home and at work. Okay. Uh, so I want your perspective as I ask you this from those two different angles. Okay. Is there a subtle or otherwise resentment in the school system about the decision to mainstream kids who, when I was younger, used to have their own school that they would go to. 
mm-hmm. and then they were put into the general school population. Is there a resentment, subtle or otherwise, amongst educators about having to do that still? Does that is, is that possibly what's shading this attitude that you're citing? About sending children to that? About mainstream educators having to accept special needs students into a public school system that and, and maybe when they were younger, they didn't have to do. I don't think there's a resentment towards it. I, I think there's a lack of knowledge. Um, and I think there's a lot of frustration in the fact that some of the children that are mainstreamed shouldn't be. I and mean, the rules of special education is you're supposed to do least restrictive environment, um, which I totally agree with. But not every child can be in the least restrictive environment. If a, if a child is very disruptive, which I know there's some legislature that has went in about that, um, they, they need more support. They need a different environment. And a different environment's not bad. Children who are mainstreamed, um, they learn a lot from their peers. But we also have to, to remember that those peers also learn a lot from that child. And if that child is not doing better and only doing worse the longer they are in a general education class, then those students are learning how to cuss, how to, for lack of better words, manipulate the system to get what they want, because a lot of it is that. So I do feel, and I know I have talked to other educators who also feel that 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 creates an issue where then we can't, nobody's learning. And we, we need these special schools. And I know West Virginia is not big on it, but we need them earlier. Like we can't wait until middle school because a child's brain is, is, isn't as flexible. And they learn, most of what they learn becomes their personality by the time they're eight or nine. So if we can't help behavior by that age, waiting until sixth grade when they're 12 is going to do nothing. So the solution sounds pretty good, but is there any, is there any committees, I guess for lack of a better word, that would constitute with um, teachers, aides, um, principals, administration at the Board of Education office? Is there any committees that, that are formed that, that look at these kind of issues? Not that I'm aware of, and and that's actually what really needs to happen. But a lot of times when it comes to special education, the teachers and aides are so burnt and they have a distaste in their mouth. So they feel like, what's it matter? Nobody's listening. Why waste my time? Mm -hmm. And it's disheartening. Valerie, we're just about out of time. Wrap this up. Give me a final thought. Give me a final thought that uh, gives me some hope about this problem being... Not necessarily solved, but at least progress being made on. Okay. Um, well, if you're a parent out there, um, remember that they are your child and you are their parent. You're not supposed to be their best friend. You're supposed to guide them, lead them, let them make mistakes because that's how they learn. That goes for the educators. And you know, our biggest mistakes are usually our biggest lessons. So let's start learning from those mistakes. Valerie, good to visit with you again. Thank you. Are you returning to the classroom next year? I am. Same place? Um, Same student. 902.